Hey, good morning. Good morning. So, tell us about your panel. I'm going to leave the stage. Well, I'm going to throw you off stage and start a little bit provocative, I guess. And please feel, <laughs> thank you, Ola. Please feel uh, free to interrupt if we're being too provocative or if you agree or whatever. So, my name, as Ola said, is Peter Marken Wangler. I'm a producer at SVT, the Swedish National Television. I've been covering the music business for about 20 years. And let me just start like this. Why is the quality in the music business so important? Is there money to be made? Hell yes, it is. Are women being uh, better leaders, being more creative? That I don't know. Maybe we should ask Marie over there, Marie Dedin. No, I'm not going to ask you. I'm just stating a thing. And uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to throw you off. And also, is it a coincidence that so many female artists turned record CEOs or entrepreneurs five, six years ago? I don't think so. But to discuss this, we have three prominent guests, and they're really, really good at what they're doing. They're great musicians, they're great artists, and they're being successful as well. And they all three have unique perspectives since they had their breakthrough in three different decades, the 80s, the 90s, and the first decade of this century. So please welcome pop, punk icon, Kaisa Grütz. Big hand. You can sit over here, Kaisa. And also pop artist, of course, you know her, Rebecca Tonqvist. A warm hand, come on. And also, without her choir, gospel choir today, electro pop artist Jenny Wilson. <laughs> and least but not last, or last but not least, uh, we have the head of government institution Statens Musikverk uh, in English, Music Development and Heritage Sweden, Stina Westerberg. <laughs> Right, so as I said, feel free to interrupt if you feel that need to say something. Uh, I think we all do feel the need to say something, especially today. Kaisa, the first question goes to you. You said to me on the phone that women make better music or being more innovative than men. Please explain that. Uh, uh, to say that would be uh, to generalize, but it's something about... Uh, in mu making music, there's something about women and um, innovation. Because small boys, when they learn to play music, they seem to follow their role models and gladly uh, follow the tradition which has confirmed them. So it seems like maybe women has to, has to find their own genre or space to be superb. You mean that men mimic their idols, in a sense, and they don't go creative themselves? Yeah, because maybe it's because I think much about it, because I have a little, little son who's 16 and he's been playing. And, and playing he, with you as well. Yeah, <laughs> and, and the tradition has confirmed him. But, but maybe women has to find their own place. An example is in the electro clash in the early uh, 2000. It, uh, it, made, it came from the do-it-yourself movement that yeah. was really uh, women dominated. And now we have Lucky Lee, Robin, Phoebe Ray and Jenna Wilson who came from that mm. movement. And it, it was, they were, were innovative and, and, and rather uh, it's in kind of the same thin the, line. The, yeah, it's the punk movement where uh, yeah, the do-it-yourself uh, feeling was it? in the 80s or late 70s. Uh, yeah. we, we leaned on the prog thing in Sweden. They the had built mm -hmm. a network and an autonom mm. things that we could use. And they mm. were very, very welcoming to, to women's music, mm. really. The prog, I don't know how you say that in English, but I think it's uh, we a pro this progressive political, rock. This politi political music Left. scene. Mm. And they, when we took that over, we didn't have to be so political. We could be more... More uh, um, just use the structure of it, and not yeah, the yeah. structure. So, Rebecca, you said to me that you find working with men. I'm sorry if I sound like a sexist. I'm not. I'm just being, you know, the host of the panel. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to talk to my husband about that. But um, you've said to me that working with men is more focused. Uh, you believe it's more focused sometimes than working with women. What do you mean by that? Well, I think I was answering a question of yours as to um, if the collaboration in itself differs, if you would have the suggestion that you work only with women or if you work only with men. But again, of course, this is a generali generalization. But um, I mean, obviously, if you, 
if you have inher inherited a prerogative of, um, of interpretation, uh, you know, in, in art or elsewhere, it doesn't mean that you, you are, uh, you know, um, suppressing somebody else, but it does mean that you, you do not, I think, in the same way, at least traditionally, feel that you have to, you know, ask around all the time, is this a good idea, should we do this? You just make your suggestion and, and, and you uh, quite naturally <coughs> assume that this is a, a suggestion as good as anybody, uh, anyone else's and... and uh, you mean kind of that they, don't, that they don't have to prove their right or their musical existence or...? Yes, perhaps, and, and I still think, again, traditionally speaking, that, uh, that, that uh, women do tend to have a, uh, a feel that you want to be sure that everybody is, you know, with it, joining. You don't, you know, you just don't take the lead and just assume that everybody else will, will follow. This said, I must, you know, stress what I think is very important is, that is, that the closer you get to the core, to the music making, to the art, if you will, uh, these problems tend, tend to, to, um, to fade away because the closer you get to, to the actual issue. Um, yes, yeah, so you mean by while, while working with art, while making music, the kind of equality comes naturally and, and the structure fades away? A little bit like that, yes. Yeah. And I totally agree with that. Is everybody comfy? Are everybody all right? The way you're working, and I'm still fighting that. I don't know if it's because I'm a woman or because I'm me, but that's what we're doing here, putting the little, little nudge on every structural thing we can see. I also noticed, someone whispered in my ear that you counted men and women while that film showed up in the introduction. Well, yes, I did, because, I mean, we're sitting here assuming that there is a structural yeah. difference still, still uh, existing, and... and uh, in, I mean, here I think maybe people, at least those of you who are, you know, truly interested in music, I think maybe perhaps less than elsewhere, but all the same. I did count on the introduction. I think it was like 25 men actively making music and one person who could have been a woman. <laughs> uh, which is, in, in itself, of course, is not a problem. The problem is that we, we do not, not think is... I mean, if... if yeah. it, it doesn't... It doesn't uh, it's not like in reality. In no. reality, we no. have a business now or in music now where there's a lot of women. Yes, but on the lists, yeah, there are exactly. maybe more, more women than men. So that then it's a mystery that this film looks like that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, how would we react if it were, were to be the other way around? If it was like, if it were like 25 men, women uh, on the screen and one man would say, "Oh, is this going to be about women?" <laughs> uh, but we don't think, oh, is this going to be about men? So we still do tend to have these structures in thinking. Yeah, and that's why we're challenging them here, the way we're thinking, the way we're acting. So Jenna, you are what I call, as a journalist, part of that new generation uh, of musicians that came up in, in the noughties, as it's called, the first decade of the century. Um, some of, a lot of you turned uh, entrepreneurs and having your own record companies or at least in control of your own yeah. music or your own art. And I'm speaking about people like, of course, Jenny, Robin, uh, Lale, Arne Brun, Annika Norlin, uh, Marit Bergman. The list could go on and on, taking about trees. So the on. knife. <laughs> the knife, of course, yeah. Karin Dreyer. Uh, so uh, tell us, first of all, do you agree that that's the scenario that you all uh, came out to be entrepreneurs at the same time, and why is that in, in that case? And tell us the way you work. Uh, well, I think what happened uh, when I was about to make my first solo album in 2004, I guess, um, was that suddenly I could actually sit at home with my own computer and make my music and and produce all by myself. Um, I, I came from an uh, from indie pop yeah. band called First for Power, and we, um, we started out in the late 90s, and the situation was totally different back then. Um, actually, we had to go to, um, to demo studios to record expensive demos and then we had to take the demo to a certain place where we could you know burn a cdr because we hadn't that equipment, no. equ equipment at home and the internet was 
uh, still new. We couldn't spread that way. So, um, did you spend time in those leather couches in the big record company offices as well? <laughs> yeah, talking to we, people. We were <laughs> supposed to do that, but uh, we were lucky and other people picked us up. But that was the way to go to actually make phone calls and and please. Uh, the, the, the major labels, which is, was always men at that time. So here's probably a tricky... now also. I'm sorry? Yeah, probably yeah. The, the major labels still are uh, most S men. So here's a tricky question for you. Would you in fact have uh, started out your solo career, which is very successful nowadays, uh, if it wasn't for the technology, if it wasn't for the fact that you could work alone? Um, I think I... I'm a little bit too sh too shy. I can't just walk into an office and say, "Hi, look at me. I, you should sign me." I I have to prove myself, and I don't want to do it. Uh, I don't want to ask for permission to to uh, do what I want to do. So for me, it was the main reason that I actually that I'm actually here today as a an artist. Uh, it's the technique, yeah, that I could record and produce and do it from my own. Yes, you're a little bit example of that, the case I spoke about before, the electric clash, do it yourself and so on. Um, so, Stina, to let you into the conversation as yeah. well. You're kind of far away. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm uh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you are head of uh, Statens Musikverk and you have about, if my research is correct, about 8 million Swedish crowns to uh, distribute in the next three or four years? Four years. Four years, yes. uh, yeah. just for the case of equality. So, who's going to get the money? Well, I think it's important to say, to first of all ask the question, how uh, are we equal or are we not equal? And what has actually happened during the last 10 years, especially in Sweden, we have had a really nice development with fantastic uh, women who are making music and being mu professional musicians. So we have seen a change. Um, and I think it's uh, important for us, we, we, we have the assignment to sort of formulate a proposal for, for actions that, that will uh, guarantee that we will, this change will keep on developing. Uh, but what we will do is to first of all uh, meet people and to have talks like this uh, and to talk about uh, gender equality. And we will look at good examples because there are really fantastic examples. We have, uh, I have one example in the south of uh, south of Sweden in Malmö uh, that's called uh, Poyam on Jam. Uh, it's it's two two uh, musicians, young musicians, who some years ago started a club. Uh, the club is called On Visit, so it tend became on jam and they have like eight uh, sessions during a year uh, where the, the first goal was to really make opportunity for for women to make young women to make music together uh, but it has developed to a very equal scene where uh, they have a like 50-50 men and women performing. And this is a great initiative that is actually very, uh, uh, that is also supported by IMPRA, that is the improvisational uh, or, um, organization in Sweden for uh, female musicians within improvisation. Uh, and, um, so we do have the good examples, but who's going to get the next money? <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's also the interesting question, because we have to know what, what is actually, where are we not equal? And it's also important to see how to become so, a professional musician. Please and answer that question, though. Where yeah. are we not equal? What do you think? Um, I think it's a question of uh, initiative. Uh, who is actually having the holding uh, sort of the initiative? How to become a professional musician? What do you need uh, to be a professional musician? How can you uh, earn your money? Uh, do we have equal salaries? Do we earn the same money? How is uh, are is it easy to be? Um, uh, can you be a, uh, only be a singer if you, or a songwriter when you're a woman? Or could you also be the drummer or the bass player? Uh, could you be the band leader? Uh, could and now you I'm going to interrupt you because yeah. there's so many questions and I'm looking for the answers. Yeah. <laughs> so, so just to, to be a little bit provocative as well, um, 
or not being progressive, just state the fact. Are we talking here about the structures, as Rebecca was saying before, uh, that the yes. closer the art you get, the more equal you get, but the closer to the structure or the organizations or the record companies or your organization or, or my organization, the more uh, not equal we get. Yeah, Is I that agree. a fact? Yeah. So what are you going to do to kind of tear down those borders or tear down that structure? Since you uh, are things. part of the government. Yeah, two things. First of all, we will meet people to really focus on what is the problem. Do we have a problem? Yeah. And is the problem, as you say, are there different problems within the structures, organizations, and uh, close to the artist and music maker? How, how are these, how, how is it actually looking? Uh, and definitely we will sort of investigate that and meet people and talk about that. And then we will do really support initiatives that can really strengthen uh, the equal equality between genders uh, with really practical projects that can support young musicians uh, and uh, music makers. And that could be uh, an example like on j jam. Uh, it could be uh, this is summer camp for young uh, female rock musicians, pop colo, some kind of projects that mm. do really do that. But then also we will definitely look at the structures mm. uh, and see how can we um, uh, help employers, for example, companies, to formulate a strategy for gender equality within the musical life. So, so uh, I started out this poem by saying, uh, is there money to be made? Hell yes. I just answered it myself. Pure speculation. I have no research you know, supporting this at all. But what do you think, Kaisa, you said as well, mm -hmm. being more equal, actually, because there is an audience that crave the female music or just not the male music. Please elaborate on that. I think the, the choice is when men in business choose men, and that's an emotional choice. It's not a rational choice. It's the choice of, and what they have to gain is only brotherhood, not money. Do you mean that they support each other? Or? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a subconscious emotional choice, I think. The one who did this film, it's not, he didn't think, I'm going to make a film with only men, no women. He just did it, or maybe it was a woman, but it just happened, and it's, and and it's uh, that uh, when we when we discover that it's not rational, it's not uh, it's not smart to do that choice. But I think the problem is that also women yeah, maybe choose they, men, uh, maybe. actually. But I it's mean, an emotional cho cho choice too. I think it's very. I mean. Uh, for me, I, I have al always worked in mixed groups, always, always, always. I don't know how it is mm. to just work with women or just with men, and I don't think it's that interesting. I, I work mean, with only men in my group, because yeah. I'm a single woman who doesn't have most, mostly female friends, so it's very nice to be out on tour with mm. a lot of men. But, but, but I have yeah. one... <laughs> <laughs> I want to say another thing too. Um, uh, we, miss, we miss business and we miss uh, a lot of creativity and, and new ideas when we see past women when we make the job. Because the audience and the buyers, they choose women as they, they choose good music and nice performances. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and we have to start with the kids too because uh, I have my son as an example. Because there's a strong thing about the brotherhood of rock and roll. It starts there, mm. and, and they close, they, they want to be together, and they, they close the doors. And that uh, maybe we have to really force the kids to, to mix gender. Yeah, because that would be a thought, uh, speaking from a journalistic point of view. Uh, I know that we, for example, have the commercial radio stations here in Sweden called uh, Lugna Favorito and so on, Mix Megapol, and they have a predominantly female audience, and they're doing quite well, I guess. I don't know what happened if, if you compare it to Bandit or the other male um, uh, rock shows and so on, but still you have that uh, economic, and now I can't find the word in English, incitament. Incitament, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> the, the kind of, the, the, the hook could, pardon? Incitement. Thank you. I hope you heard that, all of you. <laughs> so uh, you do have an audience. You do have like a financial gain to just to focus on both men and women. And what you're saying is of some kind of natural, or not, not natural, but some kind of unconscious choice to still choose men and uh, men over women because that's the patriotic structure of it all if I understand mm. you correctly. I don't know. 
Uh, maybe it's mm. this, this this thing with rock and roll as a male. Now we have music uh, that is isn't isn't rock and roll in in popular music or in so. So I don't know really why why it's that, like that. Rebecca, do you want to say? No, I just wanted to to uh, what you said about being in mixed, uh, mm. you know. But isn't it's, it's exactly that that when you work when you yeah. are making music. Yeah you don't experience the same problems as you no. do the minute you leave that, that situation and, and move closer to a situation where you have a big organization. Uh, and as you say, it's, this is not a matter of individuals being, being uh, you know, oppressing somebody else most of the time. It is a structural thing. And, I, and like you said, a lot of women as well do think this way, of course, mm. uh, in the structure. Mm. So, but getting back yeah. to, to Stina um, uh, Westerberg for, for the Status Music Fact, Jenny, what would you like uh, to happen from the government's point of view? What, what, oh. would you, what do you need as a musician? Um, <laughs> I, yeah, well, I think... Don't mind the audience. No, Go ahead. No. Um, I think one thing that would be fantastic for uh, at least... Yeah, I mean, the musicians and artists and producers that actually, yeah, work in the way that I do. I, I, I can sit in a closet and work with a small computer. I can do that, but it would be wonderful to have some kind of uh, financial stud. Mm -hmm. support. support, yeah, of course. Support to actually be able to build up studios um, in the same way as painters and other kind of artists actually can apply for having a studio uh, where they can paint. Um, there are nothing like that for musicians, I think. Well, there uh, is within there electronic music, uh, EMS, Electron Music Studio in Sweden, they have studios actually uh, for experimental electronic music yeah. uh, in Stockholm, So, which is interesting. You can have an internship there, so you can actually work as a, uh, as a composer there yeah. for even uh, for months in a row. So yeah. that's interesting. But this is a good, it's a good suggestion. We, we should definitely listen to that. Uh, I was also thinking about this question about uh, leadership. I think that leadership awareness within organizations uh, to be aware of these issues or the, the question of gender equality it needs to be focused in a strategic way. You can't just uh, from the artist. Strategic. Yeah, you have to be aware. You have to work with issues all the time, and it has to be a, a leadership question. It's not a question for each individual uh, all the time. It's also a question of strategic choices that you make. Mm -hmm. uh, if you would prepare a studio, is there a, is it accessible for for men and women equal, yeah. or is it just for what would happen if we made a studio just for women? Would that be... Uh, I think it wouldn't be okay, actually. But I think it would be... To strengthen uh, women would be... Uh, definitely is important. But I think it's also important to be aware in every choice. If you're a company, if you are an organization, if you're an authority, you have to really work on these issues all the time. But why not, I say, sticking up my chin here. <laughs> so why not? Why not have like an education for women or like studios for women and so on? We, we don't even write, raise an eyebrow when it's all men applying to certain yeah. uh, educations and so on. Is that too provocative? Is that being just sexist? I don't know what you think. Uh, I, I are, think are, we, are we actually excluding men then? I think it would be a very exclusive, excluding actually, and I'm not. I'm not sure that would be in the really the, the interest of uh, of art, really. Uh, yes, uh, and development. Yeah, right. They they have this uh, thing in Sweden called rockkollo. It's uh, yeah. like you go, go to camp with only girls. It's for small girls to learn to play, and it, they they see that they. They don't uh, dare to play in the group of, of other boys in the class in the music cl music classes. They choose to sing or to maybe play but a little bit. But after they've been there, do they huh? dare to perform in front of men? Uh, maybe I think because do, I think it's important to practice. I mean, you have to practice to meet 
I mean, that might Absolutely, sound but, but maybe naive, we, I, but I, I started with this girl group. Yeah. And we, when we split it after five years, everybody uh, uh, continued to play music yeah. that's, as that's mus good. musicians. That's great. Yeah. So maybe, uh, yeah, maybe it's not a good idea to have these camps, but it's proven that they, they learn to play and they dare, dare, dare to try to play the bass or play the guitar just for three weeks. That yeah. they don't dare in the classes. Yeah, while well, listening to you, one thing that comes to mind is that we have the, the outer pressure and the inner pressure. <laughs> and it's maybe, yeah. the, they may be combined, but it's also the structures of, of course, the outer pressure and the, the inner pressure. I'm talking about self confidence and the way that you are supposed to act as a woman mm. or as a man and so on. But um, just to get back to what you were saying before, it's interesting also that the technology is here. We have these electro clash pop artists, so on. We have these female CEOs and so on. That's been actually their success has been based on the new technology, the the, th the fact that you can actually make your music in your own bedroom and so on. But what you're asking right now is that we need to have like rehearsal studios, recording studios. You need the structure that once was within the music business mm -hmm. that's now been teared down of economic reasons, I guess, or mm -hmm. live stages and so on. And that's the important thing to for the people here in the audience that might have some power or influence in these questions, hear what Jenny is saying, I guess. And also, i like just to finish off the, this uh, discussion uh, by saying, look at our guest of honor here at the Polar Prize, Patti Smith. She is an author, she's a poet, she's a musician, she's, uh, she's everything, she's a mother. And you never even hear the word gender or equality while mentioning her name. Why is that, you think? I love Patti Smith, and, um, <laughs> <Me too>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I think when I think about her, I think about um, something that really comes from her soul, and not a fight. She's not. She hasn't been fighting for for equality. Maybe I'm wrong now, but uh, yes. it's it's not it's not her main um, statement. Equality. You mean I she takes it for granted? She's no. Um, she's been. I think she's been one of the boys all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's been one of the boys, yeah. and she. I mean, she have. Actually, I was disappointed when I read her wonderful book, which I also love. Just kids, you mean? Yeah. Just kids. She never mentioned a woman. No. She she does, but Janice uh, Joplin. Yeah, Janice. Janice was somebody she adored, adored. but uh, you didn't really see that. I mean, she, she really adores a lot of men. There is a lot of men in the book, and she loves men, and she is one of the boys, I think. And that might sound very... not but very... But not good. But isn't but that also the, the tricky thing, that in order to kind of really get somewhere and really, really make a statement and leave a mark, you would have to, at least in the past, let's say, mm -hmm. you know, act as if you had absolutely the same rights as everybody else. Yeah, yeah, and I you cannot so. focus too much on these questions no. because then you won't get anywhere as no. an artist. Mm -hmm. And luckily, when you do get close to the, mm -hmm. to, to the art, to the core, to the yeah. music, you don't have much of these issues. Mm -hmm. But also in the other life, the less you focus on it as an individual, you're much more likely to get somewhere. But, on the other hand, you might not take the responsibility that you, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as a, you know, um, society kind of, you know, that part. Mm. But then should you have to? Or isn't everybody in their right to do and go and pursue, you know, their way of, of, of making music? That's a really, really tricky question. Yeah, it is. It's r extremely difficult. Yeah. And I think that's a... Totally beautiful wrap-up. <laughs> That's totally spontaneous from Becca. Because here we are, sitting, taking that responsibility. You all three have successful careers and artistry. And we have one head of a government institution. And I'm sitting here being a journalist since 20 years back. And we're talking about this. I don't know how you got here, but you're talking about this now. Mm -hmm. um, just by doing this in the Plural Prize sessions, some of us might think about equality tomorrow, I guess. Or the day after, I hope. So I want to let the audience in. If they have any questions, Yes? Uh, hey, I don't really have a question, more of a reflection. Um, women, girls are brought up to please, 
Um, perhaps as Rebecca started to, that thread that you were going on now, maybe if we just um, sort of became better on doing our thing and not uh, focusing so much on positioning how do we relate to other, are all the women in the group, or, you know, are everybody in, what, follow your heart and have the guts to uh, stand up and speak up and um, sort of applaud the friend in who has the guts to do it. And maybe we could just support each other that way. Wonderful, sir. And you just did, stood up. Over there? That's the last question. Be specific, don't feel the pressure. Uh, actually, I have a question to the audience, um, specifically to uh, see if uh, you're right in saying that females don't have the leadership in, in the music industry. How many of the people on their main Spotify playlist have got more than 50% of those songs from women bands or artists? Ooh, behave! Absolutely. You got to do better. No, and if we, if, we, if we take away the bands, just uh, singers, how many? If, if how many of, of you have got a playlist where the majority of the songs on your main playlist playlists are from women? Oh, from women, no, from women still. From women still, yeah. Okay. I'm a bit disappointed. I would, I would still contend that the, the female leadership in, in uh, music industry is already there. Anybody remember who else apart from Beyonce and Lady Gaga were on the MTV Awards the other day? <laughs> <laughs> all right, wonderful. Uh, well, that is that's the, that one we could one can argue about that because it has to do with individuals on the one hand. Uh, what gender does the person in power have? That's one thing. But is the structure built upon a tradition that will favour one or the other? That's a totally different question. So it is a difficult question. Not necessarily. Well, and I'd love to. Well, I hope I hope you're right. And I'd love to hear that chat that's probably going to go on in a few seconds uh, when we got off this stage, I guess. So please, uh, thank you, Kaisa Grut, Rebecca Tong, Christiane Wilson, and Stina Westerby. My name is Peter Markemagler. Thank you very much. So uh, I think also to your point, you're not Swedish and there's a certain shyness factor in the room. So if you would have asked the other way around, you would have had...